Hey, everyone. Harry here to talk about the latest hearing on the gag order in Justice Juan Merchan's courtroom, which occurred this morning, Thursday morning. Now, significantly, it's the first uh, time that this the gag order has come up since Merchan issued a pretty blistering order on Monday about a previous set of 10 alleged violations of which he, the judge, found nine had been established. And he assessed a fine of $1,000 because that's all that New York law permitted him to do on the fine side of things. And he made a point and a very uh, ominous one for Trump of saying, you know, this just doesn't do it to safeguard the integrity of the trial and regulate the conduct of a wealthy man like Trump and, and issued a really stern warning uh, that uh, he would be um, cruising for a bruising or otherwise put be subject to an incarceratory penalty that is going into jail and might be uh, for a short time in the holding cell in the courtroom for start behind the courtroom for starters. Uh, but that, that was the first time that any judge in any court involving Trump uh, who has given people fits on gag orders said something pretty close to next time you're going in. So this um, hearing this morning might have been thought to pose that uh, prospect, but it didn't because the um, violations all had already occurred by the time Merchan had issued that Monday order. So it couldn't reasonably have been thought to um, uh, be something that he would follow up on his Monday order since it had preceded it. And indeed, he maybe even sort of did it on purpose. He could have had now this starchy order, but this will look as if uh, when he gives, as I think he will get to that in a moment, uh, so additional uh, fines. It'll be as if he's, you know, done it a few times. And uh, now if Trump doesn't uh, straighten up and fly right where we're talking about, you know, looking at some kind of jail sentence. Um, now, the DA is is sort of all in on the, the, the plan. They again uh, said we're just <clears throat> asking for a fine now. But I think it's understood that next time, if it's a flagrant violation, uh, they would um, move the judge. And I think the judge has shown himself prepared to follow through with at least, again, some kind of confinement for, you know, but that, that then, of course, could be torqued up all the way to the 30 days that is the maximum that the law in New York provides for incarceration. So it, it puts him in a position, Merchan and Trump, where they can get continually up the price of his um, contemptuous behavior. Okay, so uh, they go through the four, and uh, as he had done previously, uh, Merchan didn't rule on them. He's going to issue another written ruling, but at least um, some of them, the, you know, Todd Blanche, the lawyer for Trump, did his best. I'm not in court this morning. I'm back uh, actually um, across the country. But the accounts uh, included um, a, um, a description of Blanche as being anxious and halting. And I, I think I read the word desperate. Uh, he is between the ultimate rock and a hard place. Trump demands results. And that demands no behavior, uh, no penalty for being uh, contemptuous. Uh, and the judge de not just demands results, but demands uh, logic and reason. And it was in the last um, hearing of this sort that the judge said to Blanche after he'd argued that republishing something, that's not that's not a violation of the gag order and also had uh, tried to argue these are just responses to political attacks. They're okay. Um, that the judge has said you're, you're at risk of losing all credibility with me. So he, you know, a seasoned lawyer uh, is obviously sh shaken up and, you know, not having uh, about, uh, this is about as bad an aspect trying to defend 
Trump's obviously indefensible behavior with Trump breathing down his neck and wanting him, who is, you know, who knows what, to basically tell the judge to stuff it. Uh, but of course, that would usher Trump in, uh, into the back. Um, okay, so they do the four. There was a uh, focus on um, a comment that Trump made about uh, at, a, at a rally about the jury and essentially suggesting it's biased. Um, the, you know, all Democrats and that sort of thing. Uh, Blanche tried gamely to say, well, that's not about any juror. It's about the jury. It didn't look as if Merchan was at all persuaded. And he uh, just basically after hearing, you know, gave a kind of a dismissive anything else. Uh, so that had not gone well. And um, the, you know, it, it seems clear that there will be another up to four penalties tacked on of a thousand dollars, but but a stern, we are at the end of the line kind of uh, talking to. Um, what Blanche, uh, the one thing that maybe got a little bit of purchase, and and that's because the judge has already indicated it. Um, Cohen, in particular, is out there uh, totally trashing Trump. And um, Merchan has indicated, and this was what Blanche went running with, some kind of argument that, uh, you know, it insults the, the main adversary here. Trump likes that and actually has a little bit of reason saying neither Trump nor Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels had also made some, nothing like uh, Cohen, but a few disparaging comments needs the gag order. You can see they're out there just totally trashing President Trump. Uh, and, um, they, they, um, you can't use a gag order as a sword and a shield. So if they're going to do that, you should withdraw the protection. You should take their names out. And he's already broached that notion. I think it's probably hit home with Cohen and Daniels. And you're probably not going to see these kinds of attacks on Trump, but that gave Blanche something to talk about. The other thing he tried to trot out was the White House correspondence dinner this weekend where Biden made some kind of very tame joke and Merchan, you know, was having none of it and thought this like bland, uh, you know, little uh, laugh line had nowhere approached the kind of vituperation and nastiness of Trump's commentary. So that analogy didn't fly at all. Basically, he seemed to get nowhere except perhaps with this notion that uh, you, you should take Cohen and and Daniels out of the order so that he can trash them with impunity. Uh, I don't see that happening, but I could well imagine that the um, order has a sort of stern final warning for especially Michael Cohen as well. Cut the crap uh, or I'm, it's open season on you and I'm taking you out of the gag order. So one last chance on on payments uh, of you know fines of a thousand bucks a pop only probably a pretty stern order to come that just makes it clear you're in, you're you're at, at the cliff and if you know it's up to you but if you jump uh, you know I'm not gonna I'm I'm gonna let you and uh, you'll you you'll you may be um, uh, seeing the in however briefly the inside of a jail cell and it could go from there. So that was the hearing, no order yet. It might be a few days based on uh, the way Merchant's done it to date. And the trial resumed with the testimony of Keith Davidson, lawyer for um, McDougal and Daniels. And they were really just at the point of trying to stitch up uh, the uh, agreement uh, by which Daniels received $130,000 uh, and basically the whole sort of core offense that had to be hidden. Uh, at, that is the, uh, is where the, the 34 counts of camouflaging records. That's the actual charges here. Uh, it's, it's where things emerge. So in a sense, we're really just at the beginning of the core narrative, but it's a beginning that is, um, as I, as I, um, said on TV, they've just set the table, but they've said it beautifully. And it really is pushing inexorably to doing, uh, whatever they're doing to salvage Trump's plummeting political fortunes. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.